from Apex Van Life, welcome. Uh, today we're going to take you through and show you uh, our vehicles Zeus and Heisenberg. Um, they're identical vehicles, um, Zeus is white and Heisenberg has a grey cab, that's about the only difference between them. Uh, but we'll take you through and show you uh, how these vehicles work and how to get the best of them. So you do get a key like this, which is a Mercedes key, and you can just open the cab and uh, get into the vehicle. Once you're inside the vehicle, the key goes into this slot and turns like a usual car key. Um, everything in the vehicle is uh, very intuitive. The um, things we expect them to be, the headlights, the indicators on the left, um, wiper controls and things like that. The handbrake is down here where you'd expect it on the left hand side um, to release and it's got a standard gear shift with park, reverse, neutral and drive down here which is very easy to use. You've got your rear vision um, safety day camera which shows you what's going on behind you. Um, if the volume should be down but if you hear any noises coming from it just turn the volume down. Uh, but that comes on automatically and works and all our vehicles are fitted with brand new Pioneer Apple CarPlay system so you can connect up with Bluetooth or through the connections there. Um, but yeah, the cab's simple and easy to, easy to use, easy to drive. The mirrors give you great vision around and uh, we'll take you and show you around the outside. With refueling this vehicle, it's diesel fuel. Once you open the passenger door, you can open this flap and um, access the tank as normal. And uh, once again, just diesel fuel, very easy to do. And when you go around the outside of the vehicle, um, when you're plugged in a 240 volt, this is a power point for you to use for your appliances. And there are some 12 volt connections here. Um, all the lockers work the same. Uh, you press both buttons at the same time and it opens and there's a little latch to hold it in place. Uh, that's the grey water hose in, in this particular compartment. And as you come down the vehicle, uh, there's another one here for the gas, so that one will hold up. The vehicles have uh, two four and a half kilo gas bottles, they're checked and full of gas for you. Um, it's connected to, the vehicle is connected to one of the bottles, and one of the bottles is a spare one. If you do take the optional barbecue, uh, this one you use the spare gas bottle to connect the barbecue to, and uh, take it out of the vehicle, use it and put it back uh, when you finish with it. So that's that locker. And you also have the water tank here, which is a key to open. And this is where you fill the water tank. The tip is to always fill the water tank slowly. Uh, don't put too much water in as it can bubble back out. You think the tank's full, but really to fill it more slowly is the better way to go. In the, uh, the large boot in the back here, all the ancillary products are on the other side um, at the moment. Uh, but there's also this awning winder, so that's what you need to operate the awning. So with the awning, you put the winder handle into that area there, and you wind the awning out. When the awning's out, there are two support legs that come out of the awning housing, and will come down to the vehicle, and you lift this up, put the foot in there, and then lock it down. So there's one at the front of the vehicle, and there's also the same arrangement at the rear of the vehicle and that gives that awning some stability and support. So remember the rules with the awning are um, only use it when you're with the vehicle, don't leave it out when you're leaving the vehicle and don't leave it out overnight. Um, it's very risky, sudden wind can come up or storms and the few occasions we've had problems with awnings that's literally been what's happened and uh, whilst we want people to use the awnings just remember with insurance the awning excess uh, is generally more than the cost of replacing the awning. So just be aware of that, but feel free to use it and enjoy it. Um, on the back of the vehicle, we have a bike rack for you. So this bike rack will take 40 kilograms. Two standard bikes will fit on it easily, or one e-bike. Uh, be aware of the weight load, don't overload it with e-bikes. Um, they're really designed for standard bikes. And um, you also have here the auxiliary shower, which is hot and water, cold water, opens with a key, and you can give yourself a rinse off when you come back from the beach. Around here you have the, the box with um, the 
the power cables in it. So this is a 15 amp cable which has a large earth pin, uh, which is not the same size as standard household one. So this fits in at the caravan park. Uh, so you'll plug that into the caravan park. And then the other side here will plug into the vehicle at this point here. Um, and then you've got 240 volt power to the vehicle. Now the quickest way to check that you have 240 volt power is to check that there's power to the microwave. And we'll show you inside on the control panel where the breaker switch is. But if you don't have power, it's either the breaker switch in the vehicle or the breaker switch at the caravan park or the plug isn't properly pushed in. So check one of those things and you should be right. We also have these handy devices here which can take you from 15 amp with the large earth pin to household power. So if you're using it at your house or at a farm, uh, you can go from the household power supply to the 15 amp supply. Remember it has a reset switch as well. Um, the hose for filling is here. Uh, spare hose fittings are in the glove box in case you, uh, the common trap is people leaving these behind at the caravan park. And this is a filling device which is very handy to plug the hose into to fill the water tank. So mallets and tent pegs etc all, all in there. So that's in the back. This is the exhaust point for the hot water system and you'll feel heat come out of that when that is running. And that was your 240 volt power. Um, the other thing to know is the, this is where your town water supply is. So when you plug into a caravan park, you can connect the hose and then you're using town water. Um, so remember, water pump should be off when you're using town water. Um, if you fill up the tank and you want to use the tank water, turn the water pump on. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is the toilet canister, which you can open here. And it's a very simple system. Uh, to get the canister out, you lift that latch and pull it out, it comes out very easily. When you want to empty it, you turn this, take the cap off, and then put the cap back. But when you're emptying it, you make sure you press that air release valve and then tip it into the dump point, pull it out, and you're good to go again. So you put that back. Um, when you put 50 to 100 mils of chemical in it at, at uh, the toilet end, this is ready to go back in and the key is to make sure it goes in straight and square um, and you wait for that click perfectly in the right spot so we'll close it up and we're ready to move on we'll show you inside the motorhome now so when you get inside the vehicle the first thing you want to do is get to the control panel and probably turn on the light switch, which we'll show you that control panel in a moment. But in the front of the vehicle here, you've got six lap sash belts. So the two in the cab, two here, and two rear facing. These two have um, child seat mounting points. And if you want to put in child seats, you use those in the seat belts. And if you need to move the table, this is a table, there's two clips and a leg. You can take the table out completely or slide it forward or back a bit. And that table also forms a bed base. So you can be dropped down and this area can convert to a bed. These pull out, you can extend the bed. And there's a cushion up the top, uh, which can go in there and make it a slightly bigger bed as well. Um, so that's how things work in here. Um, the windows are very easy to use. The fly screens are fixed. Uh, there's a little clip on the, on the windows. So just open those and slide them open and then make sure they're all closed before you drive off. There's blinds and curtains which are very easy to use. And just remember with the cupboards, they have this latching system, the drawers. So what you want to do is make sure that they are latched in before you drive off so that they don't uh, fly open while you're driving, which you don't want to happen. Um, so once again, when you're inside, and you've got 240 volt, this is a microwave where you can check that there's power. And then of course you've got the rooftop air conditioner and the microwave that'll work when you've got 240 volt. And the power points that work when you have 240 volt. Um, you can charge devices. But if you're camping, you of course don't have those. Um, you come to these other areas here, you've got the sink. Uh, pretty much like home, hot and cold flick mixer. And you've got the cooktop. So remember the cooktop, that is a safety device to let gas flow. It needs to be all the way up. You have an electric point and some gas points. So when you're lighting those, 
you have the piezo ignition and you hold that in and turn it and then let the piezo off, let it burn for a moment to make sure the gas is flowing, then let it out. If it goes out straight away, you probably haven't got that gas flowing adequately, you need to hold it a little longer. And you'd have an oven in this one as well, which is all there ready to use. Um, won't move exactly the same way. And then of course, make sure that's down when you drive off. You also have the fridge. It has a lock to hold it so it doesn't open when you drive. It's an automatic fridge, so there's an on-off switch here. There's an automatic switch. If you take automatic off, then it will manually select the power supply. So always leave it on auto. And this is the, uh, the temperature setting. So you can adjust it, four or five is a good spot to have it. Um, so the fridge will automatically detect 12 volt power from the engine when you're driving, or from 240 volt when you're in a caravan park, or if you turn the gas bottle on, it can run off gas when you're camping. So uh, very easy to use the fridge, you shouldn't have to do too much at all. Um, I'll show you the control panel in a moment, but the bathroom, a little latch on the glass here, down, and that can open for you. The shower inside has um, hot and cold tap, as you'd expect, and a vent that you can open. I'll show you how to operate the vent uh, down the back of the vehicle. Um, pretty simple to use, a little sink there as well. And the toilet's the main thing you want to know about. So these work by opening the lid. There's a lever on the side to open. That's open to flap and you've got, now got access to the toilet canister. You can go about your business, pull this down and press the blue button to pump some water down to clean the bowl. And then push that back and make sure that black flap has closed again. And uh, that's the mission completed up at this end. Now there is a little light here that tells you when the canister's getting full, but our advice is always to empty these canisters um, whenever you have the chance at a dump point. You don't want them getting too full for a couple of reasons, but they also get heavy. So the heavier the canister is, you know, a bit more of an effort it is to um, empty it at the dump point. So empty it as often as you can. And you put in 50 to 100 mils of the chemical and a little bit of water and you're ready to go again. So when you close this, make sure you latch it so that um, it doesn't fly around when you're driving. So as you work your way down here, you've got a TV. Um, works like any TV at home. Um, you have the aerial, which you need to wind. Um, it has up and down. Put it up when you want to use it and down before you drive off. Um, the TV should retune it, the remote's here. So you should retune the TV when you're in a new area. And just make sure all the plugs are plugged in. They can come loose, they're, they're tightened in, but um, you know that's gonna be the number one thing if it's not um, coming on for some reason. Make sure all the plugs are in and your TV can run off 12 volt or 240 volt. Um, up here in the control panel, you have all sorts of things, but this is the breaker that we mentioned before. So that should be on like that. Uh, so if that's tripped, check that. And these plugs should always be left on and switched on and plugged in. If one appliance isn't working, it's more than likely a plug's been accidentally switched off or, or come unplugged. Um, with the hot water system, it runs off gas, so make sure the gas bottle's on. Click it on to 60 or 70, and it will take 15 to 20 minutes as a storage system to get hot water. Um, if it doesn't light, a little light will come up on here and uh, indicate there's a fault. Uh, simply turn it off, make sure the gas is actually um, on and then re-click it after a moment or two and it should relight. And you can always check that gas exhaust to make sure it's actually heating. Uh, of course, you've got to make sure the water heater switch is on, things like that. Um, but you've got fridge, water pump, water pump only on if you're using the tank, water heater, toilet pump, uh, the light switches, the rangewood switch and the media switch for the stereo and the TV. Um, you also have this to test here. This is telling me that the fresh water is full. Uh, you're responsible for filling the tank if you want it. Um, then you know where the water's come from and the extra carrying of weight. The wastewater is saying like there's a little bit in it, but wastewater gauges are, are very notoriously unreliable. Um, the only way to check the wastewater tank is to actually make sure it's empty yourself. The sensors in the gauge can be easily uh, triggered by uh, dirty water or, or rubbish in the tank, so very unreliable. 
best way to check it is uh, make sure yourself that it's in fact empty. That's everything up here in the control panel area. And um, the vent. So the vent's in here. There's a little latch to lock it. You should push that way and push to the forward. It's unlocked and you turn this knob to open the vent. And then make sure the vent is down and locked before you drive off. And of course here you have fly screens and a blind. So that's very easy to use. Um, plenty of lights and cupboards in the back here. And then you've got this set up currently as a club lounge. So when you take this tabletop off, it fits into here. That becomes your bed base. And these cushions, one, two, and three behind me, become the infill panel. And with the mattress protector, take out the corner cushions. You have a nice, big, comfy bed. Um, club lounge. There is a bit of a trick with these tables the, to get them down. The handles underneath, uh, you will soon work out. You um, can turn them and they have so much angle, you need to pull them out, move it back, lock it in, then turn, then pull it out, turn it back, lock it in, then turn. It's a little slow process, but it's reverse whether you're tightening or loosening. Uh, it's just the design of these. They're a common table leg in motorhomes. But if you don't know that technique, you'll be scratching your head wondering how to, how to work that one. So yeah, you can set it up and put it down each day, or a lot of people set it up as a bed and, and leave it for their whole trip. Um, and uh, you'll enjoy the van. There's plenty of windows and light areas in here. And um, a little, there's lots of cupboard space in here and plenty, plenty of places to hang a jacket if you want to. But um, that's pretty much everything we can show you through. Uh, there's a lot to digest, but um, we hope you enjoy your trip and safe travels. So once again, welcome from Apex Van Life. Um, we're going to take you through Avia, which is a Mercedes Sprinter cab, uh, Winnie Bago motorhome. Um, you will have watched the video for uh, Zeus and Heisenberg that are very, very similar vehicles. So we're just going to take you through the differences for Avia um, at this point. So the major difference is the key is different. Um, and you have this remote key that doesn't plug in anywhere and can just sit in your pocket. Once you open the vehicle, um, you can get inside. Of course, there's nowhere to put the key. Um, so it just sits in the cup holder in your pocket. Um, the dashboard's a little different very intuitive. Um, the main thing to notice in here, indicators are on the left, uh, the headlight switches are all we'd expect, um, handbrake is on the left as the other vehicles and the system in here is all standard Mercedes um, climate control and radios and things like that. The main thing to notice in these vehicles is that the gear shift is this right indicator stalk which is a more common thing in some cars. So when you got your foot on the brake, but up is reverse, down is park, and you push the, sorry, down is drive, and you push the button on the end to put it in park. So common in many more vehicles nowadays, but not your typical sort of uh, T-bar shift. Um, everything else in the vehicle is the same um, as the others, and um, very easy to use. And I'll take you and show you some of the other differences um, in this vehicle. So around the outside of the vehicle, it's identical to the others with the hatches, the power, the water, the awning, the gas system, the boot, uh, the bike racks are all the same. The difference here is the door, there's a different style of door on here. That door is open and unlocked. And when you use the key, that will drop back in and that will mean the door's locked. So to get in, you open that door. Um, and the step is the same on the way in. Uh, so much the same. Uh, no fly screen on this door, um, but um, you have a blind, which is a slightly different blind compared to curtains, just wind that down. Um, we'll take you through and show you inside. So inside Avia, it's um, uh, slightly different materials, but exactly the same uh, uh, functions and features as uh, Zeus and Heisenberg. It has different windows, so the windows are open with a, a style with a latch 
like these need to be all open and the window can pop open and the fly screens are slide down and the blind is slide up. So they all work quite well but they're a different setup with the windows that you have in it and the fridge is much the same it's automatic but it's a later model of Dometic fridge and um, all the same things are on here it's a very small little thing uh, menu that comes on but um, automatic fridge leave it on automatic and it will work perfectly fine um, if it comes up with error messages and things like that well it's either there's usually no power supply the engine's off or there's no gas the gas bottle isn't on um, if the gas doesn't light first time it's the safety cutout that normally is going on and we've got here that you know you can press and hold for about three seconds it will reset it but you know if you're running off gas when you're camping you need to make sure that um, uh, you've turned the gas on and leave it on for a little while um, the um, slight differences is like a slightly different way to wind up the TV aerial but um, that's about it um, and then of course the same in all of them you have your ladder up the top here you clip into here and you have your safety mesh slightly different style of safety mesh um, but other than that RV is um, fantastic vehicle uh, whichever one you've got I'm sure you'll enjoy your trip and uh, on behalf of the Apex Van Life team safe travels